Church with liturgy. We will have, uh, the, he's going to speak to us again in the hall and give a presentation and we'll take up a collection for the orphanage. But right now, being our guest, because you hear me every Sunday, it's good to hear another priest. So Father Constantine, thank you. Thank you. I greet you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How are you? Good. Thank Good. you so much. Uh, I'm Father Constantinos, Ariel Mudiru, Jugona, all the way from Kenya. And uh, I'm so much, Father Joseph. Thank you for introducing me. And uh, also for coming me in this uh, Hapo Church to be with you and also to celebrate the Divine Liturgy together. I know what it means because I'm a priest to be welcomed by your fellow priest. And also I thank you too for having me for the second time three years ago, 2019, I was starting here, and uh, we built a relationship, and uh, because of that relationship, that is the reason why I am back. Thank you so much, and God bless you so much, and I thank God too, because of protection and care, because three years it's a long time not seeing each other. And when you come back, you fight the church, you fight the people, and you fight your brothers and sisters. It takes the grace of God. It does not just happen. So, as I was coming, I am a married priest. I was sent uh, with me the greetings by the Papa Dia, Teresa my two sons, that is uh, Modestos and Nectarius. So we receive the greetings. And uh, also the Archbishop Macarius, uh, one who gave me the blessings to come all the way and to meet you here so that I could celebrate too. We sent uh, greetings to all the way and we are communicating with him to know about uh, myself over here. So you receive the greetings too. Uh, I feel honored today because uh, even last time when I was here, I gave a sermon and today too, I will share you with you the word of God. And. Uh, as I was trying to meditate about the word of God today, I felt like today is the day of uh, breaking the chains. Eh? You know, sometimes we are tired eh? in a way that we are not free. And uh, we are also suppressed in a way that we want to do something but we are prevented from doing it. Sometimes we are even deleted. We are black mirrors. And fear is instilled in us so that we could not maybe accomplish what God would want us to accomplish. And even sometimes we are given names because of our situation. Everybody, including myself, when I was born, I was given a name by my parents. But because of the situation, maybe you find the name changed and the people labeled you according to your situation, maybe you are going through all the circumstances. And that is why today I see it wise eh, to say that it's a day of breaking those chains. It is a 
Sunday, of another new name. I'm forgetting the labels. Because we have seen in the gospel, whenever Jesus Christ went, he was doing good. According to the gospel that we have been listening of St. Luke, to change the situation. And today we see him in a certain place. And there was this man who was possessed by the evil one. And the Bible says this guy was naked. This man did not have a home. He was always in the place. Sometimes when I imagine, especially in our area, when someone dies according to communities there, they feel so much detached to that person, those who are not Christians. They feel like the dead is forgotten. They don't want the dead cross. So I imagine this person staying in the graveyard with the dead. That sounds strange to a Kenyan man. Because even when maybe they pass by the grave, they would be very fast. They feel like the dead are talking unto them. So it's something strange if you are not a Christian. And uh, when Jesus Christ, when the devil felt the presence of Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ asking the person, what is your name? The devils, the demons are speaking. They don't let, they are not letting this guy to say his name. But they said John, because they wanted to control or they had taken the control of this man. So in a, instead of saying his name, they, they said, we are in John. Maybe this guy would have said opposite. <coughs> and they were trembling because they felt the divine power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we also see the obedience. The devil, the demon, they fear the, the presence or the divinity of our Lord and Savior. And when they were commanded as they wished, they did not hesitate to go. They went immediately because they knew that our Lord Savior Jesus Christ is the Master of the Lord. So, in our day-to-day -day lives, I know, as I have said, there are those things that normally tie us from going our way. And uh, even coming here on Sunday to celebrate the Divine Liturgy. We know that we come here, receive the Holy Communion for remission of sins, and that eventually we shall inherit that kingdom. There is that spirit that tells you you should not go. There is Sunday. Sunday is coming. When Sunday comes, eh, you still push some other thing of obstacle come, and you feel yourself so much detached to the church of God. That is the spirit of the evil one. Because the devil knows that the moment you come here in the church, he has no power, he has no control over your life. Because you come here praying, you come listen to the word of God. And the word of God 
is God himself. So he knows the secret that if you want to destroy him, then you will have to go to the church of God. You will have to go and pray. You will have to go and meet your brothers and sisters in the name of the Lord. So it is the time when you have got that feeling, that spirit, to break those chains and say, I will go, I will demolish the powers of the devil. Because the devil will label you, will give you names, such that instead of being called by your name, Eric, you will be called by a name associated with the evil, with the evil one. And he is in this world looking for that control. But because we believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are not going to give in to his wishes. Rather, we are going to suppress his powers. I thank God that I'm back in this holy church, in the church that I value very much, and it's the, the beginning of my mission, my trip to the United States began here, because it's the church that I organized my first trip with George and Father John, who was here. I did not have a way out on how I would come to the United States. And when I was starting my mission, I did not know the way to go in the year 2010. But in that year, 2019, it's when the grace of God talked to one of us here. And they reached out to me via a call. I could not believe it. And that person is from this church. And that is how I managed all these connections to come all the way. Because maybe God time had come. We have seen uh, in the Bible how many people had been enabled. Like you remember very well, the woman who had the, who was shedding the blood. So people were not, she had a name, but they were like the woman who sheds the blood. But Jesus Christ changed that. We have seen the widow and the son of nine. Jesus went there and raised the only son who was the benefactor of that family. So as I said before, Wherever Jesus Christ went, he was doing good. So I believe and I hope today we have come a long journey and we would want to take this opportunity to pass gratitude to you. Because where we were 10 years ago in the orphanage is not where we are today. We have made steps forward the steps, and it is because of you. That's why I say, because I got that opportunity to come here, that is when the doors started opening. Because we did, I remember I, I stood here, we did not have a well, we did not have water. We would go kilometers to look for water. But as I speak here, because of love, because of compassion, because of orthodoxy, we have a bowl that gives us water that we may not finish. People from the community, they come to get water from our own well, from our, in our own land, actually. 
That means that that well is permanent. Generations will come and go because it is permanent and they will quench their thirst there. It's not myself, it's because of you and Christ being in our midst. Also, we have got the church, although we don't have the pews. But as I stand here, that time we were in a classroom. Eh? As we, but like now, we are preparing on how we shall invite the Archbishop to come and do consecration. I know when I was starting the mission over there, we were labeled in a different way. We were given names that there, as I have said, we should break the chains. I heard a lot that maybe could have discouraged me from this journey. But because of the love of God, we are eliminating that shame. Because people ask, how you say you help? And we don't see how you help. You call yourself an orphanage, but you, 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 you don't have what it takes. Like you don't have good shelter, you don't have, people are still suffering. You, know, you have the good heart, yes. But the condition, people don't understand. Is that an orphanage? How could you shelter orphans in a, such a, 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 a dormitory? How do you talk of a school that has such openings? How do you talk of a church that is a, a classroom? Those are some of the shame that I would go through. But now, when they come for water from our well, they see the church there. And they call me now the priest. There before I was like, eh, you are able, as I said. Eh? See, he calls himself a priest, a priest, but he is ever in the class. We don't know what he does. Eh? Yes, we normally see them in the class. But the name has changed now. Now they can start my priesthood and the other dogs faith. Because it is another door that God has brought. And we have to be courageous. We have to break the chains so that we could, that light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could be seen in us. So, as I stand here before you, I request you not to get tired. I want us to, will you help me? Change the name of the orphanage. At least when I say I house 257 kids, when somebody comes and that is like an orphanage, a children's home, it's seen that, yes, you take care. Yes, the kids are living in a conducive environment. And I know it is the time to wipe the shame on me. Because sometimes I want to talk of the orphanage, but the shelter is like different thing. What do you do? I run an orphanage. Where? There. People are like, you are just talking, but you are not doing it. But I believe, as I have said, the time has come. I have done this 10 years via social media. It has not changed for 10 years. But now that I have come all the way, I believe and hope because the change has started, it will continue. Because I also feel shameful sometimes when we talk of he loves an orphanage. He has orphans. I believe we can change the word orphanage to a better thing. Because these kids should also be equal with others, should receive the same should should have the equality to feel warm 
like others. Yes, we cannot create another new and say it's not an orphanage, but the quality of what we offer should be of standard to this kid. And by so doing, we shall have changed the name of our orphanage to a better thing that would attract, that would say yes, Jesus Christ lives forever. So I ask you, I request you to support me in all ways possible so that we could have a dormitory that would host our kids there. Because uh, you can imagine I have got a semi-permanent dormitory that is not able to fall all these kids. Some of them are in foster homes, some of the kids. And you know the world is changing. Eh? You never know what will happen to the kid, especially the girls, when they are in other people's homes. I feel it is time to rest. I normally go to those homes. How is Catherine? How is Irene? How is Theodora? How is Mary? And they want them also me to facilitate. So I was like, if I would have them in our shelter, in our own land, this journey of going to other people would stop. And we should offer the best care possible. So that is my plea to you to work with me to ensure that we have a boarding facility in our own land as we did with the water and, and where we have the church too so that all these things would grow together it feels good when I see the church there when I see the water and now when I see the, the boarding facility of our kids when I, I aspire to see kids moving from the church to the school and also taking water there and then back to classroom. That is the time I feel, yes, we have done it. And I know it is time to break the chain and it is also time to change the name. God bless you and give you a leader in the name of the Father, Son, and